All right, hi, welcome to exercise 29, dividing a polynomial by a binomial. Okay, so let's complete the following division. x squared plus 5, 8x plus 15 divided by x plus 3. Okay, well, to be able to divide that out, we need to factor the numerator. So what we're going to do here is we can factor this to x plus 3 times x plus 5. All of that divided by x plus 3. Well, notice that there is a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. So, these two factors we can cancel out, and the final answer would be x plus 5. Alright, so that is one way to, to, to divide or to divide a polynomial by a binomial, is to completely factor, and then if the factor is the same on the numerator and denominator, you can cancel them out. Another way to do it is using polynomial long division. Okay, so this is a little bit more complicated, but it's uh, a skill that we need to know. So here we go. What we do is we take x squared here, and we're going to divide that by x. Okay, so that gives us x. Simply just gives us x. Okay, next step is what, is what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this x times this x, and this x times 3. So what we get is x squared plus 3x. I'm going to put that in line with the x squared and 8x. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to subtract that from the from this total. So x squared minus x squared becomes 0. 8x minus 3x becomes 5x. So what we have here is 5x. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this 15. All right, so that was basically step one. So again, just to kind of quickly review, I took this x squared, I divided it by x, and gave me x. I then took the x and multiplied both of those to get that, and then subtracted the total. I'm going to do the exact same thing, except this time it's going to be 5x and x. So 5x divided by x is 5, so that's plus 5 here. And then I'm going to do the exact same process, so I'm going to multiply 5 times x and then 5 times 3. So that gives us 5x plus 15. And then I'm going to subtract them again, exact same thing as I did last time. And notice that I have a remainder of 0. And there's our, there's our answer. Notice that it matches exactly that one. Note, the remainder of 0 indicates that x plus 3, so this remainder indicates that x plus 3 is indeed a factor of this polynomial. All right, so let's do one more long division, okay, just to get some practice. Again, I'm going to go over the steps to make sure we understand. So, first thing we do is we take this first term, x cubed, you divide it by x. First of all, maybe, sh maybe we should mention that, notice that they are in decreasing degree. So, x cubed, x squared, x, and uh, constant. All right, so start over. So x cubed divided by x, that gives us x squared. Okay, and then you multiply x squared times x, and x squared times negative 1. That gives us x cubed minus x squared. Okay, if you recall, the next step is to subtract this from these two. What we get is 0. That should always happen. And then negative 2 minus minus 1, which is plus 1. So negative 2 plus 1, which gives us negative x squared. And then I'm going to drop the 6. x, sorry. And we repeat. So we divide negative x squared by x. That gives us negative x. And then we multiply, negative x times x, which is negative x squared. And we multiply negative x times negative 1, which gives us plus x. And we subtract, exact same thing as we did last time. Minus 1, minus minus 1, that cancels out. 6 minus 1 gives us 5x. 5x, and then we're going to drop this negative 12. And we repeat. So we divide 5x by x, that gives us plus 5, and we multiply 5 by x and 5 by negative 1, which gives us 5x minus 5, and I hope you guys can start seeing the pattern here. We subtract that, what we get, 5x minus x is 0, minus 12 minus minus 5, so minus 12 plus 5 is minus 7. All right, notice that there is a remainder here. So the answer, if you were to divide this by x minus 1, would be this and a remainder in negative 7. This remainder that is not 0, 
tells us that x minus 1, this is not a factor of this, because if it was a factor, it would have gave us a remainder of 0. Alright, so that division is somewhat complicated. There's another way to divide, and it's called synthetic, synthetic division. Okay, so synthetic division uh, kind of uses the same practices, just maybe a little bit shorter. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to divide this polynomial by this binomial x minus 1. Alright, first thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to find the 0 of this denominator, this x minus 1, and the 0 would be x equals 1, because that would make it 0. So we're going to put this 1 right over here. Okay, and I'm going to put a little box around the rest. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the coefficients, and then the constant, of this polynomial, and I'm going to write them in order here. So, for example, I'm going to have 1, minus 2, 6, and negative 12. So these are the coefficients. Coefficients. Okay? So these are the coefficients of the numerator. Okay, and so this is how we're going to go. First thing you're going to do is you're going to drop this, neg this 1 down. Every single time you'll just drop that number. And so that means you get 1 here. Next thing you do is you're going to multiply this 1 with this 1, 1 times 1, which gives us 1. So you get a 1 here. And then you're simply going to add these up. So minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. And you're going to repeat this process. So you're going to go 1 times negative 1 gives us negative 1. And we repeat the process again. So 6 minus 1 is 5. And we multiply 1 times 5, which is 5. And you complete the subtraction, you get negative 7. Okay, so notice that this is the exact same division as we just performed. And this is the solution it gives us. Well, let's take a deeper look at what this answer gives us. I'm going to break that up for a second. What these are, these are the coefficients of the answer. So this would be 1x squared minus 1x and plus 5. Notice that you divide it by x, so your answer is going to be 1 degree lower. So x squared, x1, 5. And then what this negative sever represents, this is the remainder. And if you look at the last page, this is exactly what the remainder was, negative 7. Okay, so if you were to divide this by x minus 1, the solution would be x squared minus x plus 5 and the remainder hasn't been divided by x minus 1. It stays around. So what you say is you say minus 7 over x minus 1. Because this remainder part has yet to be divided by x minus 1. And that would be the solution. Alright, so let's do another one. We're going to divide this polynomial by this binomial. Okay, so again, the first thing you're going to do, take find your 0, and that'll be negative 3. So I'm going to put negative 3 here. In my box, I'm going to put the coefficients. So that's 2, 5. And notice that there is no x here. Okay, so we have to represent the x with a position. So I'm going to say that there are 0 x's, and then there is a 9 for the units. Okay, so this position is for the 0 x's. And if you guys want to give yourself a note somewhere, somehow, so you're going to say there's 0 x in there. Okay, so now what we're going to do, same thing. We're going to drop this 2 down, so it becomes 2, and then minus 3 times 2, which is negative 6. Complete the subtraction, so it's negative 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. Drop it down, you get 3, because 0 plus 3 is, zero, is 3. And negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. And when you add those up, notice you get 0. Oh, that's a remainder of 0. And if you remember, a remainder of 0 means this is a factor of this trinomial. Okay, so if we were to divide these two together, okay, our answer would be, and maybe I'll write this as a division, just so we can see the solution. So plus 9 divided by x plus 3. This will be equal to 2x squared minus x plus 3. Where did I get those numbers? Well, that's the 2, that's the negative 1, and that's the 3. Zero remainder, so we have nothing else left. And, um, just to make sure we understand, the remainder of zero indicates that x plus 3 is a factor of the polynomial.
Okay, so in the next example, what we're going to do is we're going to completely factor this, tr this polynomial, knowing that this is one of its factors. Okay, so again, we're going to just divide this by that to find out um, what the other factors are going to be. So I'm going to use a synthetic division, so that's the 0, right? x equals 4 is the 0. And I'm going to put all of my coefficients here, so that's 1, negative 7, negative 6, and 72. And I'm going to complete the synthetic division. So drop the 1 to start, multiply 4 times 1, which is 4, subtract, which is negative 3, multiply these two to get negative 12, uh, subtract together gives negative 18, multiply 4 times negative 18, which is negative 72, that's a good sign, because it did say that this is one of its factors, therefore the remainder should be 0. Okay, so I can rewrite x cubed minus 7x squared minus 6x plus 72. I can rewrite it that as x minus 4, which is the original factor I divided, times whatever we have left. So the remainder is, or the, not remainder, but the value that after we divide it is x squared minus 3x minus 18. And notice I can continue factoring this, tri this trinomial. I can have x minus 4 times x minus 6 times x plus 3, which is just the factoring of this trinomial. And there, there, there we go. This is the polynomial, and this is equal to this times this times this. If we were to expand all that, we would get this trinomial. All right, the remainder theorem. So we've already talked a little bit about the remainder. So if the remainder is 0, that means it is a factor. So by mathematical notation, x minus a is a factor of the polynomial function, p of x, if when you plug in x equals a, the function gives you 0. So we're going to verify if these binomials are factors, uh, or these binomials are factors of this polynomial. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply insert the x equals 0, so in, or x equals negative 1, which is the 0, into this function to find out if it gives us 0. Okay, so here we have x equals negative 1 as our 0, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert negative 1 into my function. So if I plug in negative 1 cubed minus 5 negative 1 squared minus 17 times negative 1 plus 21. So simplify that a little bit. This is negative 1. This gives us negative 5 because negative 1 squared is 1. Uh, this gives us positive 17 and plus 1. So we can simply see already, without going too much detail, this is not equal to 0. Therefore, x plus 1 is not a remainder, is not a factor, sorry. All right, next one, x minus 1. So we're going to see if x minus 1 is a factor of the polynomial. Again, all I'm going to do, and change color just so we can see it a little better, I'm going to plug in x equals 1, which is the 0, and I'm plugging in x equals 1 into my function. So that's 1 cubed minus 5, 1 squared minus 17 times 1 plus 21. And p of 1 is going to be equal to 1 minus 5 minus 17 plus 21. And a quick look, you see that it is equal to 0. Therefore, x minus 1 is a factor. Okay, we're going to do one more. Uh, we're going to check x plus 3. So let's see if I can find room for this. So x equals negative 3. Well, that is our 0. So I'm going to plug in negative 3 into my function. So you get negative 3 squared, sorry, cubed, uh, minus 5, negative 3 squared, minus 17 times negative 3, and... So I'm going to move it over a little bit, and plus 21. Okay, so I'm going to move down just a tiny bit. Negative 3 cubed is negative 27. Negative 5 times 9, which is negative 45, plus 51, plus 21. So notice that this is negative 72, plus 72, and yet yeah, it's 0 as well. So x plus 3 is also a factor of the polynomial. Okay, so it's as simple as that to find out if it's a factor or not. You take the zero, you plug it into the polynomial. If it gives you zero, 
hey, that means it's a factor. If it doesn't give you zero, it's not a factor. Okay, so lastly, determine if possible factor, the possible factors of a polynomial. Let's take a look at this polynomial here. So if we were to expand this trinomial, so x minus 1 times x plus 2, x minus 5, it gives us this trinomial, okay? So notice that the zeros are, my, are 1, negative 2, and 5. Well, if you look at the multiplication of those three, or even the multiplication of these three numbers here, because they're the opposite signs, obviously, they come up with this 10. So if you multiply all the factors together, the constants, okay, the, or sorry, the constant 10 is if, simply calculated by multiplying all the constants in the factors. So if I go minus 1 times 2 times minus 5, that gives us positive 10. Therefore, Anytime you want to factor any of these trinomials, all you got to do is simply look at this number here and find out what are the factors of 10, and those are the possible factors that you would get to get this trinomial. So, find all the possible factors of the polynomial given here, x cubed minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8. So, 8 is your key number here. So, the possible factors would be um, x plus or minus 1. Okay, so 1 is always going to be a possibility. You'd have x is plus or minus 2. That could be a, f and don't forget, those are two different factors, right? Plus x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 2, x minus 2, because they're factors of 8. x plus or minus 4, and x plus or minus 8. So those, because of the only factors of 8, those are the only actual possible polynomial factors that we could have of this. Okay, so sometimes when I'm not giving you any hints on which is the factors, you're going to have to figure out which one are the possible factors. And these are the possible factors of this polynomial. Now, I'm asking us to completely uh, factor the polynomial. So what you're going to do is, the first thing is there's going to be some guess and check. You're going to plug in some numbers until you find one. So let's plug in x equals 1 to start. That gives us 1 minus 3 minus 6 plus 8. And we get lucky in this case. Uh, I probably picked it for that reason. So we get lucky because you, you add it all up, you get 0. Okay, So that means x equals 1 is a, uh, is a 0. And therefore, x negative 1, x minus 1, is a factor. Right? Because this is the 0, x equals 1, x minus 1 is a factor. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do our synthetic division. So I'm going to put my 0 in here. So again, this is the 0 there, right? And the 0 com comes from that. And I'm going to put all my coefficients. So 1 minus 3 minus 6 and 8. And I'm going to complete my synthetic division. So, whoops, didn't want that. So you drop your 1, 1. Multiply 1 times 1, which is 1. Subtract, which is negative 2. Multiply 1 times negative 2, which is negative 2. Subtract, negative 8, multiply 1 times negative 8, which is negative 8, and you get a remainder of 0. That's a good sign. That confirms again that our, that our uh, x minus 1 is a factor. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite our polynomial. We're going to have x cubed minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8. This is going to be equal to, first of all, we're going to rewrite, we're going to write our factor that we found, x minus 1 times, this is the, the trinomial we have left, so we have x squared minus 2x minus 8, and I can completely factor that by completing the factorization of this trinomial, which is x minus, two, uh, x minus 4 and x plus 2. So this, if I want to completely factor it, is x minus 1, x minus 4, and x plus 2. Alright, good luck with the lesson guys, and we'll talk in class.